Hi, Isabel. Let's learn Pleiad HC, the place to be to develop your skills and grow your potential. So this video is about working in Switzerland. Where do you find opportunities? So the first thing to understand is that there's not one particular place where I could say, okay, go there and you will find opportunities. Opportunity could come from any place and sometimes even the most unexpected ones. But I want to give you at least some perspective on where to find opportunities online and offline. So online, obviously, the first one is the job board. So this is what everyone is rushing to usually when you're looking for a job. So places like Monster and, and in Switzerland, JobUp and Jobs and all these places, they get a lot of views and a lot of people are applying for the same position. So you will get probably a lot of competition there. So I advise you basically to apply if you see something that's of interest to you that makes sense but don't necessarily consider it your only place of finding opportunities. So job boards is number one. Number two is to use Google in your benefit. So when you're looking for work, usually people don't put the right keywords there. So they won't get necessarily the right opportunities. A lot of jobs are also misplaced somewhere in the shuffle. So I find that by using keywords uh, such as finance plus Geneva, accounting plus Switzerland, etc., you will find all these job opportunities that uh, may not be so visible on job boards and sometimes they could even be uh, not in the right category uh, classified under the right category so use google as your search partner there's a lot of also of new ways of finding opportunities whether it's online with social media and again i'll post below all the big places where i think you could find especially by belonging to groups uh, some uh, opportunities that re recruiters are putting out there Social media is used more and more to advertise uh, job opportunities. Also, candidates use it to post their resume. So it's really the new way now to put recruiters and, and candidates together without having to go through the job board process and, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so social media is a huge way of increasing your chances. Forms also can be a great way. So uh, there's some uh, websites where you can find some forms, especially if you're an expat, you're probably talking in, in different platforms with uh, groups. Uh, also, it's also linked to social media. You have a lot of groups for expats, expats in Switzerland. I have the same groups in LinkedIn that I use also myself to post my materials. So this is where by looking at the forms also to see what people are discussing about the market, where you would get a lot of news. So forums is number four, very important. Number five is to check the company websites. So if you're interested in working for a large multinational in Switzerland, by looking at the websites of those companies, you can find that, uh, you know, what it is, what kind of jobs are actually out there and what type of uh, opportunities are coming up before they even go on job boards. So sometimes companies choose to only post them. I will give you some of the companies, multinationals in Switzerland. This is part of my online package where I give listings of companies, whether they are not for profit or private uh, in different parts of Switzerland. This is part of my online career package that uh, I will also link below. Uh, it's also including some coaching with me. So it's a complete career package. But know that companies sometimes do choose to only advertise online. So you need to find those jobs as well. And finally, websites for expats. This is where expats will also share tips between each other. So if someone found a job for English speakers, somewhere will be, this person will be happy to share with everybody where he found the opportunity. There's this new startup called expat.com that's actually growing and they start having uh, a lot of information also about Switzerland that I found recently. So I will link below so that you can look and see if there's anything interesting for you. Also, these expats websites will have a section for forms, but also for jobs. So companies will also use them to post. Uh, again, when you're an expat, uh, sometimes you have to start maybe a little bit in a different space than where you were. Doesn't mean lower, but just a different thing. So you have to be open-minded is the word that comes to mind. I was talking to a recruiter and that's the word he used as well. That people have to be open-minded to their next opportunity because being in Switzerland, sometimes there's not a, a complete matching for your experience. So this terminates, uh, ends my online uh, listing for you. Now for offline, uh, so meeting more in person would help. So if you go to an event, that's something I've been repeating, so I won't spend too much time on that. But one of the offline activity you can do is really to go to as many meetups as you possibly can. 
So everyone has different responsibilities, can be a parent, uh, you have family responsibilities, but at least try to go at least once a week. That's my recommended uh, uh, you know, number of times per week. The second thing uh, that can increase your chances to find those jobs is to go to conferences. So it gives, for me, there's two benefits for that. The first one is that, of course, you can meet a lot of people, but the second reason is also to keep your skills uh, up to date. Because remember that each month when you're not working, I would also say almost each week you're not working, the market evolves, especially if you're in a, in a, a space like IT or social media, marketing, etc. Every week there's something different. So if you don't want to be uh, seen as someone who's already a little bit outside of the market, make sure that at least you attend conferences where you learn and you can bring value to an employer because you spend this time learning about maybe the new social media or a new app or something like this where you can tell your future employer about it. So go to conferences. Number three is have regular coffees within your already existing network. So everyone starts with uh, an available network of people they know before they even grow their network. And it could be such things as your family members or your classmates from way back when. So these people are already basically in your network, but you maybe haven't connected with them because of lack of time, everyone is doing their thing. So revive your already existing network by going to a coffee. If it's someone outside of your local area, you could do Skype now very easily. But that's one way to keep, uh, keep them also informed you're looking. So that leads me to my uh, next point actually is about talking to as many people as you can. So unemployment used to be a little bit of a disease. I remember people coming to my office a few years back and really ashamed of being in a position to look for work. But uh, a lot of people now are in the, in the same space and remember that with short-term contracts, you're employed, unemployed, and a lot of people go back and forth. So it's not the big stigma it used to be in the past. Now with uh, internships and again, short-term contracts, companies laying off, I think now people really go back and forth. So uh, it will be a cycle in your life where you will be employed, not, not employed. So make sure you build a strong network and you maintain it and you engage with it. Uh, so basically, that's, uh, that's how you get also some opportunities for your current network. Now, last is to network with recruiters or to talk to recruiters, not necessarily network, but at least to engage in conversation. So if you're in a city now and you have a few agencies around you, make sure that you try to call recruiters at least to find some information about which places are recruiting, uh, usually they won't have much time to give you because their job is to find the right person for the right opening that they have in Switzerland so they don't spend so much time talking to candidates but at least you know you try and maybe you find a smaller agency that's a new name out in the town and and they're more inclined to speak with you you just have to keep contacting uh, recruitment agencies and, and try to have conversations with them so uh, that's another way and, and uh, interesting way to, uh, to find opportunities in person or offline. So, so this uh, video is really about the online offline activities you can do to find a job. Remember that in Switzerland, you do need a work permit. So if you're now in a situation where you have one, great. Uh, you probably don't have an issue. If you're watching this video and you're from Europe, uh, you can get a permit via a uh, company, but it's going to be very difficult because there's already a lot of locals. So unless you're in an extremely, extremely rare function that uh, Switzerland needs, and I suggest you watch my video, the networking, I mean, the, um, the trends in Switzerland, uh, being in IT and, and, and blockchain and all these things. So if you're in those uh, fields, of course, you have more possibilities because they're in need right now of those kinds of people. But if you're just uh, working maybe as a secretary or, or a general manager, this is not as specific. So you will have probably a little bit more of a challenge, but watch the video Swiss Trends. So, um, so that's it, you know, you need a permit or you need to get one. If you're non-EU, again, I remind people of this, this is going to be extremely hard to get a company to sponsor you because there's already a lot of people locally and the Europeans are also looking for work. So if you're coming from the other side of the world, probably you're not going to be priority. There's some very, 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 again, I insist on that specific rules to hire non-EU. 
So it's not something an employee can decide, even, even if they do want to hire you. It will have to go through a process. Uh, it includes the local Swiss uh, authorities and they have to show that they can't find anybody else. They have to show that they hire you over 100,000 Swiss franc salary. So there's so many criteria that when you think about it, very few employers will be willing to do it unless they maybe bring a permit for someone who's a co-founder for a startup or someone extremely, extremely key to the functioning of the organization, then they will go through the process and probably hire a lawyer. But if it's just to hire a secretary or uh, you know someone general admin or even a manager, I would say, uh, probably they won't do it. So again, uh, just be aware of that. However, you have the non uh, not-for-profit sector with the UN and they can hire globally. So that's probably where you can enter Switzerland is with the uh, UN or international organizations. Uh, or you start your business in Switzerland and then it's a different, completely different process, which I also uh, can help you with. If you're interested, you can post in the comments and I will send you some materials on that. Uh, again, watch my video Swiss Trends and you'll find out what's actually what positions or what fields are in demand in Switzerland. Thank you very much.